Vice Chancellor, uh, thank you very much for having organized this uh, so that you can reflect with your staff the way forward uh, as we celebrate uh, the 108th year of the University of uh, Pretoria. Good morning, colleagues, and thank you very much to Professor Musia for being our program director today. Colleagues, given the current situation at our university, and in fact, all South African universities at this time, my intention today is to brief you on recent events and to talk about some of the implications for all of us, and specifically the implications for us here at the University of Pretoria. My first year back at my office on the Monday the 11th of January was quite a dramatic day. Immediately on my return to my office in the morning, I received reports from some staff that some members of our contract staff had been intimidated at train stations and taxi ranks on their way to work. By midday, there was a group occupying the client services center, and so began an escalation of protests at the University of Pretoria, even before we began the academic year. At our institution, the Fees Must Fall protests were peaceful by and large. And in fact, I've received communication from the British High Commission here in Pretoria that two of our students did us proud because some of their staff were caught in the protests outside of the union buildings. They were threatened by protesters, but two UP students came to their rescue and they ensured that the officials of the British High Commission were taken to a place of safety and they stayed with them until that was assured. As we know, the Fees Must Fall campaign culminated in a statement by President Zuma announcing a zero fee increase for 2016. Before the end of last year, in fact, at a time when many of us might have already been on leave, the President announced or issued a statement summarizing the recommendations of the Presidential Task Team and this was followed by a formal government communique to all vice chancellors early this year to inform us of an allocation of an additional 4.6 billion for NSFAS funding, as well as a further 2.3 billion to universities to fund the 2016 shortfall occasioned by a zero increase in fees. I do want to remind you that when the vice chancellors met with the presidents, it was an understanding that while we all agreed to no fee increases for 2016, that government would endeavor to assist us over and above the annual subsidy uh, to universities. Government has made good on that promise. For 2016, we have received 132 million from government towards our total shortfall, which would have been 189 million. Now, even if you did maths literacy, there's a gap. <laughs> so, our total shortfall was 189 million. Government contributed 132, but we were required to find 57 million from our own institutional funds. In total, the presidential task team received the names of 71,753 students with historic debt. All of these students have been provided for within the additional NSFAS allocation. We were further informed that the matter of what's become called the missing middle, where students with a family income of around 150,000 annually uh, and do not therefore qualify for NSFAS funding uh, will also be addressed by government from 2018 onwards. 
with a pilot program in 2017. I want to mention, if we take that category alone, the so-called missing middle, the total debt owed to the University of Pretoria at this time is 97 million. It's very important for the future of our country that our universities function and particularly continue to function at a level of quality that will ensure employability of South African graduates. As you now know, the protest action lasted for a number of days. It culminated in an agreement. The agreement applies to the insourcing process of security, cleaning, gardening, maintenance, and food services staff. And it provides for a phased approach to this insourcing. We're linking it to the expiry of existing contracts, and all of those contracts will run out by the end of 2018. But colleagues, when I looked into the matter, and I looked personally at the pay slips of many of the workers who ensure that we have a beautiful and clean campus on a daily basis. I saw for myself that many workers take home about 2,000 rand a month. We know, and I hope we all know, through our relationships with those who are responsible for cleaning our offices, that these men and women wake up at very early hours of the morning to get to the university in order to do their jobs. As the Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University, I found that I could not ethically defend that we would pay that level of wage, which is the minimum wage, to people who have served us for many years. I often step on a plane to Cape Town for one reason to an for another. And on many occasions, I've met UP staff on Kalula flights and on Mango flights. And once or twice, staff said, our vice chancellor's traveling on budget airlines. And yes, I do, because I don't see the reason that I should pay more than I should for a two-hour flight. If you think about 100% of what it takes to run this institution for a year, 38% comes from government subsidy. Last year, 28% came from student fees. And again, you don't need to be an expert to figure out that there's a big difference. So where do we get the additional money from? Well, many of our academics earn income for the university. And they do so by offering their expertise through enterprises at UP, they offer their expertise to the public. They do short courses and the like. And all of that money, colleagues, comes back to the university to help us run our institution. When we approved UP 2025 and our first five-year plan, we did expect that along the way to the year 2025, we may have to revise our strategy and our plans due to unforeseen circumstances. We are now looking at unforeseen circumstances. And it was for that reason that we chose four principles, and we call them, and those of you might remember Professor Malk standing right here talking about navigational markers. That because of uncertainty, it's uncertainty in life and the fact that life happens, despite best laid plans, that we had to choose some founding markers or points of reference. And I want to remind us what these are. Quality, relevance, diversity, and sustainability. Coincidentally, 2016 is the final year of our first five-year plan. Hence, I said to the Senate, and the Senate agreed, that this is an appropriate time for us to review and refine our strategy, to take stock of where we are in relation to our five objectives, to reconsider what refinements might need to be uh, put in place, 
and then to chart our way forward for the next five years. Professor Anton Struhr will be leading this process. It will be an open process for the next six months. And I wish to invite all of you and all staff who are not here to become involved in this process. Your perspectives are important to the future shape of this university. This is not about us, and it's definitely not about me. I'm reaching an age, or I am at an age, where I'm looking forward to sitting on the stoop one day. This is about our grandchildren and our children, and what kind of university do we want to have for them. We especially want to have institutions of high quality. So today, as we look at our institution, and particularly, it's a day when we, as custom dictates, mark the birthday of the university. Today, 108 years in total. And as I look back, it is clear to me that with that ethos that I talked about earlier, with the spirit of commitment that I referred to and loyalty of our staff, it is clear that those values have stood this university well over the past century and more. That the University of Pretoria is a resilient institution, which has not only survived internal and external challenges and turmoil, but over time has been able to grow and develop despite difficult circumstances. But a key success factor in the evolution of our institution has been its staff. That over the decades, this university has relied on a loyal, committed, and dedicated cohort of staff to ensure that it not only survives these tough times, but it continues to grow and succeed. So I want to thank all our staff who continue to be loyal and committed to this institution and to work beyond the call of duty. When we were required to reopen the institution in January on short notice, a number of staff and students turned up to assist us in cleaning the campus so that the next day we would have a presentable institution for the public. So the key lesson I think we can draw from our past as we celebrate 108 years, that if we remain open to being responsive and adaptive, whilst not sacrificing quality and the essential characteristics of what makes a good university, we will continue our path of progress to our vision to be a leading university recognized locally and globally for our quality, relevance, and impact. And today I'm asking all of you as staff members to work with me, to work with the senior management team as we navigate these turbulent times, and we endeavor to sustain and develop our university as a shining center of excellence. The fact that we moved up in the rankings, the fact that the University of Pretoria is a university of, top, of choice now for its top achievements in Kaoteng and nationally. In fact, if you look at who we admitted this year as our new first year students, many of those names you saw in the newspapers and in the other media forms, including the top achiever for the Gauteng province, has been admitted as a first year student at this university. The fact that our qualifications are sought after nationally and internationally is an indication that we're very close to realizing our dreams. So my plea to all of us, as we celebrate 108 years of the University of Pretoria, is that we not let go of that dream. That this is a time to focus even more, to muster our resources, to work together as a unified staff to stay focused during this time when we may have to refine and change our tactics a bit with respect to UP 2025. That we stay committed to quality at the very highest level, to ensuring 
that our qualifications and our programs remain relevant, that we celebrate our diversity, and most of all, that we ensure the sustainability of the university as we make um, our choices. That sustainability, colleagues, as I wish to remind you, is not about me. It's not about what I leave behind at the University of Pretoria. It's about what we leave behind. It's about what we leave behind for future generations to ensure that South Africa in the future will have high quality, world-class universities. Thank you. Thank you.